Good evening, Cherries fans, Liverpool fans, and just football fans in general. Uh, welcome to Up the Cherries in all departments, head to head, ready for this week's encounter at Anfield against Liverpool. Tonight, I've got the pleasure of having Doug from the Dugout Football Channel join us um, to go through our head to head. How are you doing, Doug? I'm doing well, mate. Thank you very much for having me. And uh, it is a pleasure to be back on here. Uh, obviously, I have been uh, trying to obviously get in uh, you know, the Sunday shows um, as well. But uh, no, it's, it's great to be here. And uh, thank you for the invite. Yeah, excellent. It's always a pleasure to have you on. So, we all know what happened last season. Um, but the Bournemouth fans obviously uh, have horrible, horrible memories of Anfield from last year. Um the encounter this year, I think it's going to be very, very different. Sure yeah, hundred percent. I think it's. I think look, that game was completely uh, a fluke because we'd obviously. I think we started the season really, really slowly. We had we had like a run. I think we drew with Fulham, we drew with Palace, we lost to United, and then came the game against you guys. And yeah, nine nil. I mean, the one thing I'll say about that game, everything we hit seem to be going in. Now, I know you guys obviously scored, like, uh, I think you scored an I think Mepin, I think Ms. Mepin, I think Ms. Uh, scored the OG. Just everything that fell to us just seemed to go in. Um, and the most bizarre thing about that game, Mo Salah didn't even get on the score sheet, which is yeah. crazy when you think about it. Uh, yeah. But I totally agree. I think Saturday's game is going to be much closer than many people would uh, expect. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, when we were travelling up there last season, it was kind of, this is the time probably to play Liverpool because of the form at the time and um, how wrong we were. But now we've covered that off, we're going to talk about that again, um, that disastrous day. Um, but should we just take a quick look at the managers? Um, got some stats here with, with old Jurgen Klopp. Um, I mean, his stats are... Well, they just speak volumes of, of the manager he is. Um, Klopp, the longevity of Klopp. How, how much how much longer do you reckon he'll be at Liverpool before he fancies a new challenge? Or, or do you reckon he's going to be here for, for many more years to come? He's got a contract till 2026. I can see him... Um, I can see him going through to that contract. Uh, <laughs> and I think he'll be... I think he'll be away. I think we've got maybe two more years of him. Look, he's been a fantastic manager for us. I think the one thing I will say, I think we could have easily won more with him. Um, but I think that's not all the fault of their own. We've, we've, we've been up against a really, really good Manchester City side uh, in, in the Premier League. You know, Champions League have made a couple of finals as well, which you know we could have easily won. But you know, obviously, two were against Real Madrid um, uh, as well. So. I am I am very, very hopeful that this season, we're obviously in Europa League um, uh, as well, so I, I, I hopefully we'll go f you know, a, a lot further than that um, uh, as well. But I would say at the moment, this moment in time, I think he has a contract until 2026, and I think you'll uh, you'll see through to that. Right, OK, so you don't think he'll be tempted away by anyone before that, then you, you think he'll definitely see his contract. Uh, man man well, of his word. A man of his word, yeah. I mean... People are saying Germany potentially. I, I think he will probably manage Germany at some point. Yeah. Um, but again, doesn't really sort of strike me as a sort of a international manager. If, if, if you get me, I know obviously there's been like rumours with obviously Real Madrid. Um, as well. I know that Ancelotti, I think, is going to be I think, Brazil manager next That's year. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, as well, so potentially he, he could get he could potentially be getting linked to. To that, but no, I think he I think he is a man of his word, and I think he will stay at Liverpool till twenty twenty six. Yeah, well, I mean, I know what you're saying with that. You know, he could potentially have won more with with Liverpool, but I mean, as a personal record, there he, he he's won everything in 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 the game, isn't he? Really? Yeah, except the Europa League. The only trophy he's not won at uh, yeah. Liverpool is the Europa League. So if you was to get that, you'll have complete the. He'll have completed the set. Um, no, he, he's been fantastic. He's been absolutely fantastic for us as a, a, a as a manager. And uh, I think when you when you look at what he's he's achieved um, uh, as well, obviously the, the the Bundesliga going up against a really good Bayern Munich side. You know he managed to get you know two Bund he managed to get you know two Bundesligas in there. Obviously a DFL pal uh, 
Pokal as well, and obviously, you know, the, the Super Cup. Mm-hmm. Um, as well. He is a very, very good manager. And I think, you know, people have said a lot of things recently in that, yes, he might not have won um, a lot recently, but still a very, very good manager. I, the, there was always going to be a time where we would have a bit of a blip, and I think last season was that blip. So I'm hoping this season now we will have a much, much better season um, to, to come. Yeah, no, I totally agree with you. Um, will forever be a legend of the game, Liverpool legend, and, and, and I mean, just his record speaks for itself. I mean, to win Coach of the Year twice as well, um, yeah. from a personal accolade, it, it, it's, a, it's a fantastic achievement. Um, but let's have a chat about this man. Yes. Uh, Mr. Underdog in some respects, um, because uh, a bit like what our, one of our previous bosses, Mr. Howe, um, sort of achieved in his days at Bournemouth, sort of overachieved with with a club that, you know, you wouldn't expect to achieve what you achieved with. And, and that's kind of what he his career has been about. Um I know you watch quite a bit of Spanish football, don't you? Um, yeah. What, what's your take on 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 Iriola as manager? I think he was very, very good for Royal Vallecano. Um, You know, he managed to get them sort of, you know, top half. Um, you know, I think as well he had he had some very, very good players at Royal Vallecano. Um, obviously, I remember obviously Radamel Val- Falcao being at you know Royal Vallecano under his you know stewardship um, as well. I think he is a very, very good manager. And I think as well, I've seen a lot of differences between what Gary O'Neill did for you guys and what Iriola has managed to bring in. I think Iriola is more of an attacking-minded manager. And I think that's a very, very good thing to, to have. Look, Gary O'Neill did a fantastic job. He did a fantastic job to you know keep you guys in the league. I think getting Iriola in... Yes, it is a bit of a gamble, but I think in the long term, I think it will pay off. Yeah, yeah, no, I totally agree with you, and and the football that you know we've seen during pre season and and you know in spells against West Ham, we can see it's it's a totally different style to to, to obviously Gary O'Neill. Um, but I mean, for me, this is this is a a building exercise. You know, Rome wasn't built in a day. And I think if he's given the time by the football club to to build the team and get the team playing as he wants, um, I, I think he's going to be a very successful manager in the Premier League. I think he will be as well. And I think as well, like I've seen a lot of people put you guys in the bottom three, which I don't understand because I think with the, the owner that you guys have got, Jeff Foley, he clearly knows what he's doing. And I remember what he said on... Um, what he said about like on talk sport. I think he was asked like why why did you obviously get rid of like Gary O'Neill, etc. But it's obviously looking towards the towards the future. And I think mm-hmm. you've got a very good manager now in Iriola. Um I th- th- this might come sort of back to bite me on the on the back backside, but I can't see you guys being in the relegation battle this season. I think you'll have gone away, you'll have gone away and, and said, look, this is our second season back up. I yeah. think you will have gone away and actually said, right, this is what we do. Get players in. You've managed to get a couple of uh, really, really good players. Obviously, Kirkic, I think, is a, a fantastic sign. The left back from uh, Aza Daltmar, I think, is a really, really good sign. And so, you know, obviously, Justin Cliver um, as well. I just think the score Bournemouth have got is stronger than the likes of uh, like a Luton or a Sheffield United. Absolutely. Uh, or even an e- Craig, Craig's favourite team, Everton, um, <laughs> to say the very, very least. But um, yeah, I, I actually have, I actually have you guys. I think to sort of finish, sort of similar to where you sort of finished last season. Maybe even, maybe even get a little yeah. bit higher. I honestly yeah. think you're in for a good season. Yeah, I mean, I, I echo what you say. Um, if this would have been last season. Um, and, and last season, I predicted us to finish um, 17th. Um, and that was my mm-hmm. heart telling me that because I knew we were in for a real, real fight. There was, you know, obviously the the sell was starting to sort of be rumoured and Max Denham wasn't 
obviously wanting to invest because he wanted to sell. So we were going into the Premier League season on probably, I mean, in some of the comments Scott Parker made at the time was probably right, but you just don't make them public and, and, and put your squad down. But um, with the transfer business we did in January and the, and and this summer and bringing this guy in, I, I, I totally agree with you. I, I can't see us being in and around the bottom. I think it's that sort of small club, small club mentality that some people have that, you know, Bournemouth for a tiny club and, you know, they go down. I mean, look at Luton. I mean, I've predicted they go down, but I don't reckon Luton would go down without a fight. You know, it's it's not always fair and right to, you know, necessarily write off the small clubs, which obviously we've proven, you know, for five years straight in the Premier League for, for a club of our size. We, we were punching above our weight, but definitely under this new ownership, um, I totally agree with you. I can't see, I can't see us being in that bottom three, um, totally. But let's switch it back to Liverpool because obviously Liverpool have had quite a bit of um, transfer activity. But the, the biggest thing that stood out for me is is, is losing some of these guys. Um, yes, you know, and look at the trophies they've all won there. You know, they, they've all they've all won trophies at the club, and you know, it, it's. It's a, in some respects, I see it. Obviously, I'm not a Liverpool fan, but I see it from an outsider looking in. A, a brave move, but at the same time, probably a needed move, needed freshening up. Yeah, I, I think I think you're absolutely spot on when you said I think it's needed. I think when we look back at uh, we needed mid, we've needed a midfield rebuild for a number of years. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I think the only midfielders that we've brought in ever since. Um, I think uh, ever since Naby Keita, I think Thiago, obviously, obviously in 2020, yeah. uh, and and then um, obviously Ar- Artur Melo, which was an absolute disaster. We will we'll, we'll not talk about talk about him anyway, but it was needed. <laughs> it was needed. Um, and look, Naby Keita, very good servant, just couldn't stay fit. Alex Oakley Chamberlain, very good servant, couldn't stay fit. Um, Firmino is the big one for me. I think he's been. He was a, he, he will go down as a Liverpool legend. I think the the fact that he scored in his final appearance against uh, Aston Villa uh, yeah. just said it, everything. It was written in the stars for him to to, to score, um, as well. And then you look at James Milner, unbelievable footballer, unbelievable um, athlete, unbelievable he, fitness as well. He's he, honestly, I think he will potentially be the all-time sort of Premier League appearance record. I think it's still Gareth Barry, I think, still yeah. ahead of him. I think by, yeah. I think it's by, I think about 20 games or something. So yeah. I fully expect James Holder to um, do that as well. Henderson is the big one. I think a lot of people have kind of looked at, at Henderson and I, I think he wanted to leave. I, I think there was a, uh, there's maybe been a, a chat between him and Klopp and I think what's happened is I think he's probably asked How's my game time going to be? And I think Klopp said, well, it could be a bit a bit limited. Obviously, we, we age um, as well. The big one for me is Fabinho. Now, we haven't, at time of recording, we have not actually got a CDM in yet. No. And we've let Fabinho go. I think we were caught off guard. I don't think we were expecting... I don't think we were expecting to lose Fabinho, Jordan Henderson and James Moner in the, in the same window. But it's happened. And if I'm being honest, we are massively underprepared going into the rest of the, of the of the season. I know there's obviously two 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 to three weeks left of the transfer window, um, and I am hoping that there will be a bit of transfer business to to come in. Yeah, I mean, there's lots of uh, uh, rumours which we would we'll, we'll talk about shortly. But um, just just to go back to to Henderson, um, he's probably the one of the most decorated captains of all time in, in Liverpool history. Um, do, do you think, it? you know, when media and, and, and other fans say things like he's sort of like the most overrated, you know, captain in, in, in Liverpool's history, would you, would you say that's a fair comment? Or, you know, have you... Because, I mean, I've never been... I mean, I'll put my hands up to this. I've never been Henderson's biggest fan um, until the Euros when I thought he was absolutely outstanding and it, and he changed my changed my outlook about him if that makes sense um I, do you think he's in for some hard, you know has he been in for harsh criticism since he's been at Liverpool I think Jordan Henderson's been a fantastic captain 
uh, for us. Um, I think with what you've like, he is the only Premier League captain for Liverpool to win the Premier League. Um, mm-hmm. So that's that's the we, we all we all like the the Hendel shuffle when he obviously did you know win the win the league and obviously the Champions League and you know, you know other trophies there as well. Um, I do think his legs have declined. I do think he has declined as a as a player. Um, but what I will say, he has been a fantastic servant. I remember when we brought him in, there was a lot of people sort of raising their eyebrows. Why why are we bringing in Jordan Henderson from you know Sunderland, twenty million quid? Um, yeah. But I think the money that we paid for him. I mean, people people forget this. We actually were almost going to sell him in 2014, uh, potentially to get Clint Dempsey uh, from, from Fulham. There was a big, big uh, sort of outcry. But Jordan Henderson completely said to, to Rogers, "No, I want to stay and fight my, for my uh, for my place." And and look what he's what he's managed to do. You know, you know, win ev- nearly everything really. And I think as well, yes, he does get a lot of criticism. And I know he's he's a very, very good player. He's a leader. He's a leader off the pitch as well. So the fact that we've lost that is look, Van Dyke is going to be a very, very good captain. I can I can tell you that. And obviously Trent, uh, vice captain as well. Both of them are going to be fantastic. But having a leader in the dressing room, I think as well, um, will be very. It'll be it'll be a very interesting thing to see what will what will happen this uh, without Jordan Henderson, um, as well. But. I think there was a lot of people that said Jordan Henderson is either going to leave Liverpool and go back to Sunderland. I don't think anyone expected them to potentially go to Saudi Arabia, but there you go. Yeah, that's where the money is at the moment, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, Milner, just very quickly on Milner. I don't know if you saw um, the highlights, the, the match of the day highlights over the weekend, but he was absolutely outstanding for Brighton. And again, playing at right back. Yeah, um, I, I, as as I said, he again fantastic servant uh, to the Liverpool Football Club. Again, another player who was sort of on the on the decline. But the one thing with James Milner is that you got you got a really really hard worker. You got someone who was really really determined to you know put in put in the fight um, as well. And Mister Reliable, you know. Um, Obviously, one of my subscribers calls, calls him James Freaking Milner, which, which I, I, I'll absolutely love. Um, I think he's a wonderful, wonderful char- character in the in the dressing room. Um, and again, we've lost another another very very key player in, in that um, in that dressing room. But I think he's going to be a fantastic player for Brighton, and I'm really happy that he is still staying in the in the, in the Premier League. Um, and as I said, as I said previously, I do think he will potentially go and get that. Um, Get that Premier League record of the uh, all-time appearance maker because I, I I think he, I think there's no other player that would deserve it. Yeah, no, I mean, I totally, totally agree with what you're saying there, and I think, I mean, what's he? Thirty-eight now. Thirty, either thirty-seven or thirty-eight, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, he's I I could see him still still playing when he's forty. And and I think those twenty appearances to beat Barry's record, I think he's got them in in the in the palm of his hand. So and and they're thoroughly deserved. I mean, made his debut at what seventeen for Leeds. Oh, I remember, I remember when he, I remember him making his debut for Leeds as well. Uh, sixteen year old. Sixteen. Um, as sixteen, yeah, he was sixteen when he made his debut at, uh, at Leeds. Um, and to just think what he's gone on and won, um, yeah, as well. So yeah, yeah like. It, Fantastic player, and obviously, I, I wish, I wish him, I wish him nothing but the best because uh, he was, he, he is, he is a Liverpool legend, and he, he always will be. Yeah, no, absolutely, and a true model professional for other professionals, young, young, inspiring players to look up to. Um, the old rumor mill, obviously, still going. Obviously, transfer window still open, etc. And I, I know you're very much a believer of, you know, as soon as the shirt's in their hand, that's when you believe it. But there's a few rumors yeah. about your number one, um, Alison, about going to Saudi. Um, yeah, I, I think I've, I've got to be honest. I don't see that happening. Um, no. I think he's. I think he's already actually came out and said that, that him and his family are, are happy. So I can't. I can't see him. I can't see him leaving uh, Liverpool this summer. Definitely not. How, how important is he? Is he to Liverpool? I mean, 
obviously, you know, I just see, you know, when we play them, obviously I see him play, but and other than that, I just see, you know, highlights mainly or maybe the odd Champions League game here or there or European or Cup games or whatever. So, I mean, how important is he to that Liverpool setup? Absolutely massive. Absolutely massive. I think uh, I think when you see when you see Alisson not in the Liverpool side, I think the goals conceded get a lot higher. I think you you know Cleveland Kelleher, fantastic goalkeeper. You know, I I think I feel sorry for him because obviously he is you know number two um, at the, at this moment in time. Uh, I, I do think he does deserve a, a move out, but Alisson last season was arguably our player of the season. I mean, the amount of games that we that we lost and and, and this this is the thing as well. The amount of games we lost, yes we lost like three 0 at, at, at Wolves, we lost like three one at, at Brentford. Allison kept the score down in every single game uh, that, that that we lost. Um he's a very, very honestly, I I don't think I've ever seen a keeper that is as good as him. Um Obviously, I, I'm probably too young to sort of remember sort of Ray Clements when he was like uh, at, at Liverpool. But Liverpool have had some shocking goalkeepers over the over the years. Obviously, I remember uh, Sa- Sander Vesterveld, uh, David oh, James, yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, sorry, okay. Adam Bogdan, Loris Karius. I mean, there's been ab- some absolute uh, some absolute shockers, and then obviously you've got had Pepe Reina. Fantastic goalkeeper. Yes, he declined at the uh, um, uh, at the end there. But Allison, for me, I think if we're talking sort of Premier League, I think he's been our best goalkeeper of the Premier League era by a long way. Um, and yeah, one of the only goalkeepers to score. Um, yes, as well. But yeah, I think Allison is a very very good goalkeeper. I think he's been a fantastic servant for for us as well. But. I honestly can't see him leaving this summer. I think he's. I think him and his family are happy. Um, and uh, he he likes his music. I don't know if you've uh, noticed that or, or anything, but he he does like to play his. He likes to play the guitar. Oh, um, he? He, yeah, he came out. Um, he came out at like a, a Liverpool gig, and he he was playing the guitar, and I think he was singing. He was singing the Ali 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 song. Um, and this was when obviously Liverpool uh, decided to get their third kit. Um, released as well. So you saw saw Allison come out. You saw Sabosloy came out, and uh, you saw uh, Missy Bulkerns uh, come out um, as well. And then there's there's Allison playing the guitar and singing away. So yeah, he, he does he does like his uh, does like his music. Does uh, does Allison Becker? Ah, right. Well, I never knew that. That's an interesting fact. Um, in terms of international football with him, is he Brazil's number one? Or, or is he, isn't he? Because he's, yeah. he's with the Man City goalkeeper. Yeah, um, Allison and Ederson is very interesting, uh, to say the very least. I mean, they've, they've obviously got Weberton um, uh, as well. But yeah, Allison is, as as we speak, he is the number one for Brazil. Right, OK. OK. Yeah, I always wondered that because there's always seemed to be some sort of, uh, you know, one minute I'd see... Edison playing in the goal, and then I see Allison, and I'm thinking, you know, is 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 Edison better with his feet than Allison, or is that the reason why? Or I, it's just something I've always wondered. To be fair, I've never really paid much attention, but I'm, I'm pretty certain both keepers are pretty decent with their feet, aren't they? Oh yeah, definitely. I think I think Edison's distribution is probably better than Allison, but I think as a sort of an all round keeper, I think Allison is the the better goalkeeper. Yeah. Yeah. Well, staying with the old transfer rumours and obviously the window still being open, obviously you're after a central defensive midfielder and, and these names seem to keep cropping up every now and then. I, I saw a couple of these names a couple of weeks ago and recently, as of yesterday, I think I saw a couple of these names linked to the club again. Um, who would you sign out of these three if, if, if you had the choice? Um... Graven Birch is an interesting one because he's been linked with us throughout the summer. He was linked with us yeah. last summer. Um, Polinia had a very good season for Fulham. I remember him as well playing for Sporting. He had he had a good uh, time of it as well. Um, Dukure, I don't know too much about Dukure, 
But I think as well when you when you look at what he's um, what he's done this season, I think he was Crystal Palace's Player of the Season um, as well. And I think when you look at uh, when you look at what uh, they've actually done um, to him, um, yeah, I think he got he did get their Player of the Season because I think Roy Hodgson uh, came in. But a lot of Palace fans are being sort of a little bit divided on on him um, uh, as well, but. Apparently he was very good at RC Lawns uh, when when he was there. Um, I I think if I'm being honest, like some of the names that I've seen mentioned, obviously, um, Dakuri is a very very good player. <laughs> but obviously some other some other names that I've obviously seen mentioned, Amrabat, obviously that that one seems to that yeah. one just seems to have come out of absolutely nowhere. That seems to be either Liverpool or Manchester United. Ra- Ra- Gavin Birch is the as uh, the other. Um, but the fact that we did lose Caicedo, we lost we lost Lavia, um, was very very disappointing to say the very very least. But yeah. I, I think many people kind of knew that Caicedo was definitely a player that wanted Chelsea. Lavia, we kind of got into negotiations very 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 quickly, but we were sort of low at lower show for offers. Uh, and everyone knew that Southampton's price tag uh, for him was fifty million pounds, um, and and Liverpool just didn't get up to that. And then we went when we went in for Kaisi, there was like, oh, Lavia's sort of you know second choice. So I'm not surprised he's he's chosen um, Chelsea. But I think out of this lot, I think the Curry is probably the one to potentially keep an eye on. I think there will be a bit of negotiations in there. Um, I mean the other the other names I've seen mentioned Douglas Louise, uh, Aston Villa, uh, Kamara. I mean I don't I don't like to sort of speculate obviously over you know other players anyway, but I do think that there will be something in and around Dakuri. I I think I think there is major interest in in Dakuri, and I I think potentially we could get him. Good fit for the squad. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. I think good age, uh, good price as well. He 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 would he would he would fit he would fit our midfield like a like a glove definitely. Ah, well, it's just it's great to hear your opinion on all this because uh, you know we hear so much about you know transfer windows every time as you know this player's linked to this club and you know it's always interesting. I find it more interesting to to hear a fan's perspective than than a pundit's normally. But if we have a look <laughs> at the Bournemouth uh, links. Um, Obviously, we've had a pretty decent window, as, as, as I'm sure you know. And currently, hot on the press is these two names. Um, mm. Tyler Adams is the one that really stands out for me. Um, obviously, last week was was having a medical at Chelsea, and Chelsea pulled out because they were then putting their attentions elsewhere. And and hopefully, this will be Bournemouth's game. Um, apparently, according to all the press, we have triggered his release cause. Um, so it will be interesting to see whether we get this one done over the line. But um, I don't know how much you know about this particular player, but in terms of from a Bournemouth perspective, would be an excellent player to fill the Jefferson Lerma void for me. Definitely. Um, Tyler Adams, I do know a wee bit about. I actually, uh, as you, I don't know actually if you know, but I do watch a bit of German football as well. So obviously I did oh, see him when he was obviously a Leipzig. Um, yeah. I think he's a cracking wee player. I think he's a really, really good player. Um, played in a really poor Leeds team last season. Mm-hmm. Um, I think there's been a, like a lot of like reports saying like he's injury prone. Like I think he's had only one serious injury. Um, he seems to get like wee niggles and and all this. I don't think I don't think like wee niggles is sort of being in the in the realms of injury injury prone or anything, but. Just going obviously back to what you said obviously about uh, Jefferson Lerma. Lerma, fantastic player when he was a oh, when he was a yeah. Bournemouth. He's obviously a pass now. I think that you know that's Palace's gain to you know Bournemouth's loss. But Tyler Adams for me would be a very good signer. I think if you get him over the line, you can slot into that midfield with with Philip. Um, and I do think as well that would be a very very good move um, as well because. I feel I feel really sorry for what's happened to him, especially with what 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 what's happened with obviously Chelsea pulling out of of signing him. So I think as well looking at um, looking at what uh, what is actually out on the on the market, 
I, I think Tyler Adams is a no-brainer for uh, for Bournemouth, and I really do hope you you get this over the line. Yeah, no, and so do I, because you know it, we're just lacking that little bit of bite in the midfield, and I and I think this guy could add that. And um, yeah, I don't think we'll get it over the line for Liverpool. Possibly, it'd be good if we could, because um, I think he would slot straight into that midfield. Um, but yeah, we definitely need someone to come in just to give us that little bite in the midfield. Um, the other player, Ronnie Edwards, um, another one at Peterborough. Peterborough seem to be a club that can sign and produce players that they tend to sell on for, you know, loads of money. Um, there's been a few over the years. Um, Ivan Tony's probably the biggest one that stands out that they made a good profit on. Yeah. But um, this this lad here, um, part of the England squad that won the the tournament back in the summer, I believe. Um, yeah, yeah, I believe he was part of that squad. Um, he he's had international recognition at some age groups. Um, I believe if we purchase this guy, he he would be for the future a bit like Alex Scott. Um, obviously, young, fresh players, skillful players. Um, and I think this this will shape the club going forward, these kind of signings. So um, I hope we get him across the line as well, because I've, I've seen a few games that he has played for Peterborough um, on the TV, mind you. But from what I've seen of the guy, he, he looks like he's going to be a, a good, strong addition. So hopefully, hopefully we'll um, be able to get him across the line. But you know what the transfer window is like. There's going to be probably another 10, 15 names that we're all linked to before the window closes. <laughs> we could go on about that all day. So back to the match on Saturday. Um, you start in line-up. Yep. Changes I the think, team? Yeah, I think there will be a couple of changes. I don't think Gagpo midfield works. I've been saying this. Uh, I've been saying this quite a, a while actually that he's wasted out in midfield. Uh, I think as well when when you look at the Chelsea game, Reese James and Raheem Sterling were completely on Andy Robertson. And the problem is Luis Diaz didn't drag back as well. Gagpo didn't drag back as well. So I do think that there will be changes. I think Jota will definitely come out of of the starting lineup. Um, as well, so I am going to go Allison and go. Um, I think uh, Alexander Arnold will start right back, could potentially move into midfield because we do like to go to a sort of a back three, uh, almost. Uh, Kanati, Van Dyke, um, captain, of course, now and obviously the, the fill the void of Jordan Henderson, Robertson. Um, I'm going to go McAllister, and then I actually think Curtis Jones could potentially come in, either Curtis Jones or potentially Harvey Elliott. And then obviously Sabosloy will, will will fit in there as well. And then I'm going to go Diaz, Gakpo, Salah. Interesting. Well, for me, I think it's going to be a similar setup to to the West Ham lineup. Um, obviously, Marcus Sensei went off. Um, Tenesi went off with um, an injury, but apparently, from what I've read, apparently it's it's, it's bruising. It's it's very minor. So hopefully, he'll be back into the squad. Um, Lewis Cook won't make the squad. He's he's injured. Um, he should be back for the Tottenham game. Um, Dango Atara, um, he's actually in a uh, a boot. Um, he sat in front of me oh. um, at the West Ham game, um, and he couldn't really say how long he's out for. So considering he's in a boot, that's going to be some time, I would imagine. Um, so he won't be available. Um, with Lewis Cook not being available, I'd imagine Billy. Um, Philip, sorry, got to change that. Philip, um, Philip will be um, probably playing in a deeper midfield role. I think he's better, sort of in behind Solanke, as as all former fans know. He, he he's more better as an attacking threat, but I think he's going to fill that that void while Lewis Cook's not available. Or if we do sign Tyler Adams in time for him to start, he might then obviously push him back forward. So it all depends. Um, if we, if we get that Tyler Adams deal over the line to to maybe what the lineup would be, but um, I think I still think he'll go with Clivert on the bench. I think he's kind of at the minute um, introducing him into games as a sort of a plan B to try and change the game a little bit. So I'd imagine I imagine Brooksy uh, will, will definitely start. He's been on fire during preseason. Um, he's got on the end of a few goals during preseason. So 
Um, I imagine he he will start. Um, Max Ahrens, um, who we signed from Norwich, and, and Marius Kirkes, he he will start right back, left back. So, yeah, I, I'm pretty certain it'd be a be a very similar lineup to to the West Ham game. But with that in mind, um, let's have a look at some. Always difficult to do this, but I, I like to have a look in, into stats and 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 compare a few like for like players and things like that. So. Um, this one's an interesting one for me because Trent, yeah, midfielder or right back. You see, I think he obviously is a right back by trades, but I think now you'll see. I think you'll see him potentially move into midfield now. Um, he's been thriving in this sort of hybrid role that he did. That he sort of towards the end of sort of last season he was looking very very good in that hybrid role um, so I think going forward he will definitely be a midfielder yeah yeah I mean from what I've seen I mean Gareth Southgate's also tried him in that role hasn't he um, I can't remember which game it was which international it was uh, uh, but I oh. remember watching it and I, and I thought he was outstanding in that role I know it wasn't a real high class opposition but for someone yeah. that, you know not in their normal position for the performance he put in I thought was absolutely outstanding I can't remember which fixture it was now okay. Malta maybe yeah it might have been them but in terms of Saturday it'd be right back do you reckon yeah I think I think he'll definitely start at uh, right back um, I think as well that look Trent, Trent is a very very good player he does go walkies at times like defensively yes. um yeah. but i'm a big i'm a big fan of max irons as well i think he's I, i'm so happy he's got his like big move because obviously i remember him like at, at, at norwich and i remember like jamal lewis like went um to obviously newcastle he's obviously yeah. gone on loan to to watford that, that that looks like a very good move for for him and then you've kind of seen max irons just like being sort of stuck at uh at norwich and and then obviously you guys, you know, come in and you know get him, and I think, I think he put in a very good performance, a very good shift against West Ham, um, and he'll definitely need to be on his toes, especially against a sort of a, a Luis Diaz or a or a, a sort of a Darwin Nunes on uh, on Saturday. Yeah, I mean, I've I've always rated him, um, Max Ahrens, um, and when we were first linked to, him. I mean, it kind of come a, come about. Uh, I don't know if you remember a Bournemouth player called Jack Stacey. Um, yes, I was, do remember Jack Stacey. Yeah, yeah, he was uh, released at the end of his contract, and he signed for Norwich. Um, and I did hear through the grapevine that that might release Max Ahrens to come our way, which it has. Oh, okay. So. That for me, I mean, we got Adam Smith at the club, absolute legend, um, come up through the leagues with us. Um, but, you know, I think his best days are probably over. I thought he struggled a little bit towards the end of last season. Um, we've got Ryan Fredericks as well, who just can't seem to stay fit. So for us to sign mm. this guy, who I think, you know, has got a real exciting future ahead of him, is it, it, massive. And I am... Um, it's hard to compare these two players because obviously, you know, Trent is an established full international. Um, but Max Ahrens is also an international at, is it under 21 level? I think he's still yeah. playing that. Um, but I think he's, he, he could potentially maybe, I mean, have a good couple of seasons at Bournemouth may, may push for an England place possibly. No, I think I think that's the that's sort of the problem that, that, that England have got. I think as well like, that they're, they're stacked for right backs. So like you you look at the right backs, yes. obviously you know you know playing Trent in, in midfield is is no is nothing sort of nothing new. Um, anyway, but yeah, you look at the right backs you've got. I mean, obviously, Carl Walker's there. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, I think you've got Carl Walker Peters potentially um, yes. uh, as well. Trippier, I think obviously. Trippier, yeah. Um, and then obviously, like on the left back, so Berthy obviously, Luke Shaw, Ben Chilwell. It's I think full backs is where sort of England are pretty strong at. Yeah, it's um, a tricky one to crack. 
Yeah, so it's always always difficult to sort of be in that in that England side. But I think, as you say, I think if Max Aarons has a good couple of seasons at, at Bournemouth, he could well potentially be one of the ones to be pushing for an England call up. Yeah, it would be it will be interesting to see now how his how his career progresses because um, I think he was promoted two times with Norwich as well, so he's he's yeah. he's got a lot of experience, a lot of appearances for 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 a player of his age. So it's going to be really interesting now to see how he kicks on at Bournemouth. Um, this guy, I I love this guy, Alexis McAllister. Um, yeah, I thought he was absolutely phenomenal last season. Um, What's your thoughts on on him in terms uh, of signing him? I mean, is he is he the complete Liverpool player already? Is he just slotting into the first team as as a complete player, or has he still got some room for development? I mean, to get a, a World Cup winner for thirty five million quid, and I know it was a real a release clause, but <laughs> yeah, it it is just an absolute bargain. I absolutely love like Alexis McAllister. Absolutely love him as a as a player, and I think as well. I, I think he's going to slot really, really well into this Liverpool midfield and as well with, with Sabos Sloy, um, as well. I, I do think it's going to be very, very intriguing to see how well he'll be he'll be able to do, um, uh, as well. But I think Alexis McAllister for me is a very, very good player, um, and I, again, he could slot into any midfield, um. As well, because you know, I think as well to be like a World Cup winner, to obviously set up one of the winning goals in the in the World Cup final, um, and obviously I know it did go to to penalties, but his his football brain is fantastic. It really, really is. His weight of pass as well. Um, I I I think it'll be a joy to watch. I think it'll be a joy to watch this this season, and especially with obviously you know the other one, Sabosloy as well. I I think we've seen two fantastic players, and the one thing we've been lacking in the midfield is goals. So I'm hoping McAllister likes to take a free kick, Sabosloy likes to take a free kick. I'm hoping that they'll be able to you know get the goals from uh, from midfield. If obviously you know the the, the front 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 line uh, don't get the goals. Yeah, no, yeah, definitely. I mean, just looking at these stats here, comparing these two, um, they're quite close in some respects, but then in other areas, they're completely, completely miles apart. Um, mm. Like, for example, assists, billing, billing two assists last season, um, which is surprising considering the season he had. I mean, he did contribute quite a few goals, to be fair. But little things on, like... Um, crosses for example you know one two nine to one two two so they're quite close in in certain areas but you know miles apart in others um <laughs> but then again for me billing in comparison to, to alexis is, is quite a difficult one um because billing can can play several roles is is McAllister the same as he is he did he not play a bit deeper against chelsea am i right in thinking <laughs> Yeah, he played as the uh, sort of the CDM uh, role um, as well. But I think you'll probably see, obviously, when when Liverpool do get a, a CDM, I think you will probably see McAllister and Sabosley as sort of the the attacking sort of midfielders. Um, and I do I, I, look, McAllister was excellent against Chelsea. Though he had a very very good uh, Premier League debut, uh, and he will only get better from from here on in. But I absolutely love Bill, uh, Philip um, as well, um, Philip. Billing, I think he's a fantastic player, and um, he was a fantasy football favourite last season. A lot of people had him in the in their team because um, we, we know that he he did pick up a, a lot, a few goals here or there as well. So I, I think as well, you guys obviously having him managed to keep on to him. I think is is very very key. I know you've obviously lost Jeff Jefferson um, Lerma, but but keeping Philip Billing in there will be will be very very key. I think. Yeah, no, that's going to be massive this season, really is. Um, so yeah, let's have a look at some forward players. Um, Dom and Lucas Diaz. Um, have we seen the best of Lucas Diaz yet? Um, no, I think I think he's got a lot more to give, and especially with the fact that he was injured for most of the the season last season. Um, I, I think we've got a lot, lot more to to see of uh, of Lucio, of Lucio. Um, and I do think 
as well, Diaz scoring in against Chelsea was very, very good. Wonderful pass from Salah to you know play him in. Um, I do think at times though he can sort of hold the ball up a little bit too much, but I, he's only he's going to improve anyway. I mean, the, he, he was another one that's been, that was being linked with the uh, move to Saudi, but completely. Um, that those rumours were, were false completely. Um, as well. and, and, right, and rightly so. I think as well, when you look at our forwards now, Gakpo, Nunes, Diaz, um, Salah and Jota, that's that's not a bad sort of front five to, you know, to, to, to have. And, you know, it gives, it gives Klopp a lot, of, a lot of headaches as well. But I think if we're looking at the season for, for now, Luis Diaz, for me, is a starting left winger and then obviously Salah is definitely the, the starting right winger and then it's a case of well do you have Gakpo Nunes or, or Jota but I do think there is more to come from Luis Diaz and uh, I am very very hopeful that he can have a good season um, as well Yeah, yeah I mean with Dom I think what all us Bournemouth fans are hoping for this season is, is, is a few things that he stays fit um, being one um, and that he can start to add to his goal tally again this year. Um, but for me, a big strength of, of Dom's, and I don't know whether Liverpool fans saw a lot of it or not, but is is that he can hold the ball up and, and create. He can create for the wingers and, 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 and for like someone like Billin, who they had a fantastic partnership with over the last couple of seasons where Billin plays slightly in behind him. So for what he does lacking goals in terms of, of Premier League. He does make up in other areas. Um, but I think a big thing from the Bournemouth faithful this year is that hopefully we can see him see him on the score sheet a bit more. And obviously he started started with a, a goal against West Ham. So hopefully if he's lucky he might pop up with a goal at Anfield. But um yeah, we'll have to uh wait and see on that one. But I mean what sort of memories of Dom from Don being at Liverpool, do you, do you personally have? Can you remember anything that stands out? Or um, he's kind of a bit part player, wasn't he? Yeah, it's it was it was an interesting move because I think it was a like a move that was sort of one definitely one for the one for the future. But I think as the sort of the uh, the, the times went on, I think people kind of saw that, yeah. So I think he's probably not going to be. Too much of a of a of a key player for us, but what I do remember from him, uh, the goal against Brighton, the one where he literally took on his chest and literally lashed into the, the top corner, um, as a bit. I hope I I think Dom will get a good reception on on Saturday. I think he, he he'll definitely get a good reception. Um, I I th- I think he is a, he's at the right club right now, and I think he will. I'm hoping that he scores a lot more goals this season because last season he was. He, he did get a couple, but um, he was sort of in and out, in and out. Like some games he would score, and then some games he would sort of disappear. But I think he's a very, very good player, and I think if you get get the right service into him, I think the goals will definitely come. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I totally agree with you. Um, question for you: How long have you been supporting Liverpool? Oh, uh, well, I'm I'm 31 years old, so. Um, I have been supporting Liverpool probably since the early 90s, I've got to be honest. Um, 95, 96, I would say. Um, okay. Yeah, I've been, a, I've been a Liverpool fan all my life. Um, pretty goes much to what my dad's. Uh, my, my dad's a big Liverpool supporter. He, he saw them in the 70s and the 80s, um, sort of their successful um, period um, as well. And uh, Yeah, if, if, I did, if I didn't support Liverpool, then I think there'd be something far wrong um, <laughs> as well. But no, I, I just I, I love I love supporting the club. I love um, I love going to get the the games when I can. Um, but I Liverpool's the, the team for me definitely. Yeah, how how are you with your Liverpool legends? You up on them? Uh, a little bit, yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Okay, well let's take a little trip down memory lane and let's have a look at players that played for both Liverpool and Bournemouth. Um, first one up is a. Uh, very famous name that I'm sure everybody knows. Uh, Mr. Oh, of course, yeah, Jimmy Redknapp. Yeah, um, yeah, that is uh, that is uh, some kit on the on the right. Um, 
I think it's a word for that kit, isn't it? Um, yeah. I believe that's the FA Cup final of 96, which is the first real cup final that sticks out in my memory that I can remember watching as a kid. I mean, I must have been, well, no, I would have been about 10 then, and I was already watching Bournemouth by then. But it's the real first cup final that sticks in my mind that I watched on telly. Um, yeah, that was the uh, that was the final where um, they decided to wear white suits going into going into Wembley. Spice Boys? Yeah. Was that their nickname, the Spice Boys? Was that Spice Boys? Boys? Yeah, Spice Boys. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, Radnat McManaman, um, a couple of others as well. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. White white yeah. white suits. White suits going into Wembley is just a no no, <laughs> a complete no no. Um, <laughs> You'll you'll actually see as well. I think for going into like, obviously the the away game when we do come to it, that you'll see our away kit is sort of something similar to that sort of um, picture on the right there. Um, yes, as well. And I I think it's I think it's quite a nice it's quite a nice kit. I know it's had a lot of sort of criticism, uh, but I I do I do like. I, and my, my me myself, I am a kit collector as well, so I do so I do like I, to yeah. do like to collect kits. Yeah, yep. So am I. Um, Craig would tell you as well. Um, the amount of Bournemouth shirts I've got is into the hundreds, way into the hundreds, and wow, um, to the point of where, um, like this season's away strip, um, is the yellow and blue half our third strip, which is actually uh remake of a shirt from sort of around that time there um the liverpool one there sort of 96 to 98 um and i have seen liverpool's um version of this one the the new one and i I, and the same with our bournemouth one i think i describe it as a iconic a twist on an iconic shirt you know it's a modern twist on a on an old on an old um icon really because i mean that that shirt there's iconic i think yeah. But, um, Jamie there playing for Bournemouth. That's just before I started watching Bournemouth. Um, that's, um, oh God, A1 windscreen. So that's got to be 1990, that picture there, Jamie. Um, I wasn't even born. I was born in 92. So, uh, no, I didn't uh, didn't see Jamie for uh, for Bournemouth. Yeah, no, I, I started watching him when uh, it was about the year after I f- I think it was the year after, about ni- late 1990. He, he'd gone by then anyway uh, to Liverpool. But um, that's the first one on our trip down memory lane. Um, let's have a look at the next one. Jimmy Case. I mean, I I have actually met Jimmy Case. Um, oh, have yeah, I have. Yeah, I, 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 he came to, a, came to like a Liverpool thing. I think it was... Um, Alan Kennedy, Ian Callaghan, and actually Jimmy Case. Um, the, those three came to came to Edinburgh. So uh, I, I do like to sort of get to these kind of events and uh, you know get the sort of the, the meet and greet um, as well. So yeah, I have I have met I met Jimmy Case a couple of times and um, he was a fantastic player um, as well. But uh, again, too young to sort of remember uh, Jimmy yeah. Case, but. Uh, yeah. Still a fantastic, uh, fantastic player when he played for us. Yeah, well, it must have been a pleasure to uh, to get the opportunity to meet him. But very successful at Liverpool, um, and obviously, sort of came to Bournemouth in his twilight years. But uh, here's one that we all know, Mr. James, <laughs> who featured last week on our uh... West Ham. But um, uh, I picked that picture there because I mean, goalkeepers' kits in the nineties was something else. I mean. It, that one he's wearing there for Bournemouth is about what 11, 10, 11, 12 years ago. And, it, you know, goalkeepers' kits these days are just so like plain, one colour, pretty boring at times. Whereas that one he's got on there, I think that's a Reebok kit, I think. It's, it's just something else. It's, you just don't see kits like that. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Calamity James, I believe, is his nickname at Liverpool. Yeah, Calamity James. Um, he he wasn't he wasn't the worst player to to play for us, but he did he did have his moments. Um, again, another another top top guy. Um, to to I think as well he he is a pretty good pundit as well. Um, David James. Um, 
and he plays in a lot of legend games as well, which is which is quite uh, quite good to see. But uh, yeah, I think I think he was he was he was all right at Liverpool. He was all right at Liverpool. But uh, yeah, um, I think I think he was one of the, those sort of goalkeepers that uh, probably moved on at the right time, and and then obviously went on to you know play for uh, Aston Villa um, yeah. after that. Made an appearance in the cup final as well for them and won it with Pompey, didn't he? If he did right. indeed, yes. He did indeed. He certainly did. Here's one. Um, I think oh he my was goodness. Very, very, very uh, highly thought of at Liverpool, but I think he was just unlucky with injuries there, wasn't he? I get, uh, yeah, you're absolutely right. Again, injuries were just uh, a thing of uh, what happened with... Um, with Danny Ings, but look, another player who I fully respect um, as a as as a as a man, and uh, I think as well, it is a shame that he had to had to move on. But I think he kind of moved on at the right time, um, and, and he did he did well at Southampton. He did really well at, uh, at Southampton. Um, you know, very very young there at, uh, at Bournemouth. I can't even remember him at Bournemouth to, if I'm being honest with you. But uh, I think he will kick on at West Ham. I think he woke up on at West Ham, and uh, I think he is a very, very good player. And I think, uh, again, given the right service, I think he will he will definitely score some goals. Yeah, yeah, I think I think you, you're probably right there. I mean, speaking to um, Russ last week from the uh, West Ham network, obviously Danny Ings came up on on the played for both then, and um, I think we kind of agreed between us that he might not be the the answer to. Uh, their goal scoring problems, but we'll see. We'll see. I mean, he's scored goals everywhere he's been, so um, I'm sure he will for West Ham. Here's an interesting one. Um, mm. now, from what I can say about this one, Mr. Jordan Ibe, um, I believe he was at Wickham when Liverpool purchased him, or was he on loan at Wickham from Liverpool because he was meant to be some sensation. And from footage I've seen when he was playing at Wickham, he must have only been about 18. Um, he looked absolutely outstanding. And please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, when Liverpool sold Sterling yeah. to City, Liverpool believed they had a better player in Jordan Ibe. Is that right? That is very well correct. Um, nah. It just didn't materialise very well. Um, like I feel, I feel sorry for what what happened to Jordan Ibe. I think yes. uh, I think a lot has been said uh, about him. Um, that he, he is obviously, you know, he's had a lot of like mental health issues. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but I, I remember when you guys bought him from us. Um, <laughs> Fifty. He was actually the start of you guys buying players from us. He yeah. was like the first one. Yes. Um, yeah. But I think, again, I thought he was a very good player at, uh, at Bournemouth. Uh, he was very good at, at Liverpool. But again, probably one of those players where you say probably the right time to move on when he when he did. Um, but uh, no, I, I actually, I, I don't know if he's actually got a club now. I don't know well, if he's... He, he went, I think he went to Derby for a little bit. Um, under yeah. Rudy, and I think... Things didn't work out for him there, and I, I might be wrong, but I think when I last looked, he was at a second division Turkish club. But I might be wrong. But it, it seems to be one of those players that you know has everything, but unfortunately, for whatever reason, doesn't seem to make it in the game. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But I think um, I think as well that. Hopefully he'll get his career back on track because he's yeah. he is he's still a very very good player, Jordan Ibe. Yes. Um and I do think as well when, when like when you guys bought him from from us, I think we obviously put I think we put in a buyback clause and obviously that, 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 that didn't obviously materialize uh, to anything as well. But I remember I remember him at Bournemouth very very well. I remember him like in those Premier League seasons that that, yeah. uh, that you guys had. Um, and again, it's just a case of not not staying fit. For Jordan yeah. Ibe, yeah, yeah, it's a shame, really. But yeah, like you say, I'm with you on that one. Hopefully, he can resurrect his career and 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 enjoy the rest of his playing days. Um, let's have a look at the next one. Ah, here's a name. 
Here's a name. Nigel Spackman. Yeah, I don't really remember much of Nigel Spackman. I, again, this was the sort of the... This sort is of the, the uh, before our days of watching football. But, definitely. Um, uh, definitely. interesting name that... Um, that, that I, when I discovered that he played, I, I knew he played for Chelsea, um, but I didn't realise he mm-hmm. played for Liverpool. But um, he he's quite a well known um, and well remembered um, player from the old Bournemouth faithful, from the the ones that used to. I mean, that picture there is nineteen eighty. One of him in the red shirt, and that's the old Bournemouth. That's about nineteen eighty two. So yeah, mm. going back before I was even born. So. But yeah, an interesting name that cropped up that added association with both clubs. Ah, uh, here we go. This is where your story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, Brad Smith. Um, yeah, I think I think on this one, I've got to be honest and say I think Liverpool saw us coming on this one. Yeah, especially when you like uh, you decided, oh, we'll get we'll get Jordan Ive, and then uh, oh, we need we need a left back. Oh, we'll go, but we'll go back for. Uh, the Aussie Brad Smith. To be honest, I can't really remember much of Brad Smith. Uh, he played played a handful of games in that fourteen fifteen season, like the, 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 the disastrous fourteen fifteen season. Yeah. Um, and I just remember you guys like coming in for him, and we were like, "Oh, yeah, great." Um, I think it was was it six million pounds. I think he spent on Brad Smith. I, I can't actually remember the the actual um, yeah it's about fee. That. I think. Yeah, it was yeah. Really yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, that season you mentioned there, you actually played us in the cup, if I remember rightly. Was it that season 14 15 or was it 13? Oh, it, might well have been, it might well have been, yeah. It might, might well have been, been 13 14, to be fair. Um, yeah, 13 14, I think it was. And um, he played against us and he looked all right. He looked pretty decent. So when we were in for him, I thought, oh, yeah, you know, decent player. But, I mean, at the time, he, he come into the side when there was an established left back in Charlie Daniels and and I could never see him dislodging Daniels from his starting place. So, um, but he's, I think he's gone on to be successful in the MLS um, with Seattle Saunders. I think he won a trophy there with them. And I think yep. he's out there now playing playing somewhere. I don't think he's at Seattle now. Uh, I think he might be somewhere else. But um, yeah, he's he's gone on to, to play at decent level. So um, just unfortunately, it wasn't at Bournemouth or Liverpool. But yeah, here's one. Oh, Adam Lallana. I again another player I absolutely love at Liverpool. Again, just couldn't just couldn't stay fit, unfortunately, for uh, for, for Adam Lallana. But. Um, yeah, fantastic player, and I'm so happy that you managed to win the win the Premier League with us as well. Um, again, another player that probably went in the right time, um, as well. And I think as well, he he is he's a, a very very good player. I think I think with Brighton having Lalana and Nona in the in the dressing room, I think that'll be very very good for them going forward. Yeah, big big voices, um, experienced voices, obviously as well. So, um, yeah, funny story with Bournemouth. He actually started. Um, he was actually he actually played for a local child side, which is called Little Down Junior. So any Bournemouth fans watching this will know know of Little Down. Um, and then he was actually poached away to Southampton when he was in our School of Excellence. Um, and I think they paid a, a fee for him. I think it was like five five grand or something like that. Mm. Um, and that picture there is when he come back on loan. When he was about 17, 18, he rejoined us on loan for a short period of time um, from Southampton before he, he went back there and established himself in in their team. And then Southampton, Liverpool's feeder club, obviously sold him on. So, um, yeah, that was an interesting. This one here um, is just an old, old name. I believe he was Roy Evans's assistant before Gerard Houllier come in. I do believe so, yes. Uh, yeah. Again, a name that I can't even remember, <laughs> to be honest with you. Yeah, it, um, it's just the association with this one, really. Um, he, he played a bit for Liverpool. Didn't, I don't think he made many appearances for Liverpool, but while he was at Liverpool, he was sent out on loan to Bournemouth during the 70s. 
Um, I can't remember the exact season, but we got relegated anyway, so it wasn't very successful for him. But um, yeah, he uh, yeah he was Roy Evans's assistant, which is what I think he's most famous for at, at Liverpool. But um, yeah, so we just quickly pass by that one. This one's a bit of a cheat. This one because he's obviously a Bournemouth legend, Ted McDougall. Um, mm -hmm. he, he is like our leading goal scorer and this, that and the other. But he played for Liverpool reserves, but could never break into the first team. So this one's, oh, here. Okay. This one's here more for the benefit of the Bournemouth fans watching. Um, <laughs> but he didn't actually uh, break into the Liverpool first team. He only played in the reserves. Um, but... I couldn't even find a photo of him in a Liverpool shirt, so that's why he's there in a Southampton one. So let's bypass this one. And Brilliant's pretty much up to date um, with Mr. Solanke. Um, Modelling, again, another kit, very similar to the one that we saw Nigel Spackman in, a, a sort of a retro classic that New Balance seemed to have done a pretty good job with. I think if I remember rightly, the original one would have had like crown paints on it or something. Yes, that's right. That is right. Um, yeah, I, I do. I do remember that season actually. Um, I mean, fair, fair, fair play to obviously us getting Dom um, as well, but again, just didn't really happen for him um, as well. But obviously, got that final goal on the final day against Brighton. Um, it was an absolute perler as well. Um, yeah, when I remember um, as well. So, no, I think. Uh, as I said, I really hope Dom do, does well um, with you guys um, as well, because I think I think he does uh, deserve a, a move where he just needs to just get. Once he gets goals, he will he will be a very very good striker for you guys. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. We just hope he creates that form we had in the in the promotion season from the championship again because um, he was on fire that season. But back to Saturday's game. Um, both yourself and I have chosen our key danger men for the for the fixture. So um, let's take a look at those. Starting with yourself as the home team uh, with Liverpool. So why have you gone with these guys, Doug? Um, I think it's more sort of creativity. Um, Trent Alexander Arnold. I mean, his his way of passing is 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 very very good. And I think as well, if uh, if we are to get joy. I think having Alexander Arnold sort of putting big passes out to obviously Diaz or or Salah, um, potentially, uh, I think could be very very good. Dominic Sabosloy, I've got to say, this is a guy who I've been following a long a long long time. I remember him at uh, Salzburg. I remember him obviously going to obviously uh, Leipzig, and when we when we were in for him, I was like very very excited because I remember. Uh, you know, Hungarian captain at the age of twenty-two, which is mental when you when you think about it, um, as well. But I saw signs against Chelsea that he is going to pick up wee pockets of space, um, and again, he's a very good set piece specialist as well from the penalty spot, um, as well. So him and Salah might have a bit of a uh, <laughs> a, a bit of a battle for, for the yeah. penalty kicks. Um, and Mo Salah, I mean. If there's a if there's ever a guy that you obviously want to have on the on the pitch, it's it's, it's him. I mean, he he's 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 going to go down as one of our greatest ever players, Mohamed Salah. Um, and I just think the fact that he didn't score last season against Bournemouth makes me think he will be out for a, a bit of revenge on uh, on Saturday. Yeah, that was. Uh, I mean, I remember him putting the ball down on the spot now and, and I saw sort of sat there thinking oh god you know he doesn't really miss these and uh what a clanger that was so yeah you're probably right yeah to get his uh own back a little bit um not that he ain't scored loads of goals uh, against us before but hey ho but um <laughs> yeah um well I think I've chosen three um key men um that I think could play a real big part in in Saturday's game um Joe Rothrell, um, I don't know if you know much about, about him as a player um, or, or see much of him. But he's uh, Blackburn. Yes, correct. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we were meant to sign him in the January uh, transfer window of um, uh, the, the season we went up. Um, 
under Scott Parker. Um, but he was there at Dean Court all day. I think it was all agreed, but we had to get Gavin Kilkenny out the door on loan to bring him in. And I think if if story be true, um, Kilkenny didn't want to leave on loan and hence we didn't sign Rothwell. But we got him for free in the summer anyway, so the, the following summer. So um, he's been with us now for about a season. Um, he is a great traveller with the ball, ball at his feet. He can travel, he can pinpoint long passes, short passes. So I think to in terms of creating something from the midfield um, on Saturday, he could be potentially very, very key. Um, yeah. Justin Cliver, um, I think personally here, probably start the game on the bench. But if we do need to chop and change things up, he can definitely come on and, and cause some problems um, during pre-season. He created a couple of goals um, from coming off off the bench. I remember we played Hibernian um, as a good option. Um, so I think again he could be he could be um, someone that's that's if doesn't start could be definitely needed to change the game at some point. And again, Kirkes, um, yeah, solid in, in the tackle, good at going forward. Um, He's he's going to be. I mean, for a player of nineteen, he's so mature um, that I think you know. In terms of you know, if he is playing against you know the likes of uh, who plays down your right side normally, Salah is it? Yeah, he's going to be in for a real test then on Saturday, and I, I think it's a test that that he he may um he may perform pretty well. Um, but yeah, that's my three main key key men for the for the uh, Liverpool test. Um, so yeah, just one last thing to do, and as always, and that's um to give our product uh, predictions for the for the game. So, which way are you going, Doug? Yeah, I, I think I think this is going to be a, mu a much closer uh, encounter than the uh, nine <laughs> nine nil game last season. Um, I'm going to give you guys a goal because I, I still think us defensively we're not the greatest um, at this moment in time. So I'm going to go 3-1 Liverpool. Cool. Yeah, well, I think my head's probably saying you're probably in and around the right kind of scoreline, but I've got to go with my heart and I'm going to say we're going to nick a draw. Um, I said a draw last week and on the head-to-head -head with Russ and... and um, yeah, I've got to go with a draw again. I can't, I can't not back us to lose at the minute. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go with a two-all draw. Definitely. Oh, I think definitely. you would take a, I think you would take a draw. Of, uh, I think if you were offered a draw, I think you would, you would definitely take it. Absolutely, would take that point definitely. Um, but anyway, that concludes this week's head-to-head. Thanks for coming on, Doug. It's been a pleasure to have you on again. Um, just give us a little shout out about your channel. Just let everybody know how they can find you and what platforms you're on, etc. Yeah, absolutely. No, it's been a pleasure, uh, Matt. Thank you very much for uh, for having me. And actually, big thanks to Craig for actually asking me as well to uh, to come on um, uh, as well. So, but yeah, my YouTube channel is the Dugout Football Channel. It's just a basic sort of football channel, but I, I cover obviously Premier League. Obviously, mostly um, mostly Premier League, a uh, lot of Liverpool content um, uh, as well. Obviously, I do match previews, any transfer news that, that happens um, uh, as well. But yeah, YouTube, Dugout Football Channel, Twitter handle, enrod underscore 1992, Instagram, Douglas.horn, and I'm also on Facebook at Douglas James Horn. But it has been a pleasure, Matt, and uh, obviously, uh, obviously not on Saturday, but I do wish you the best of luck for the rest of the season. Yeah, exactly the same to you, mate. And uh, joining us, join us next week for another edition of the Head to Head, where we will be joined by, um, not confirmed yet, but from <laughs> someone from a Spurs channel. Um, we're still talking to a few at the moment, so there should be someone with me next week. And um, until then, up the cherries.